Well, hello. If you're one of the people wondering how I ended up in your feed, it may have been through one of these. In a saga spanning seven states, the fentanyl robbery gang unleashed a wave of terror through online dating platforms. Federal prosecutors have charged seven individuals in a scheme that left four dead and over 50- Now that introductions are out of the way. Today, we're talking about Sea Dog VA's charity auction featuring a gaming experience with Her Majesty Pokimane getting a little messed up due to the use of stolen credit cards to make bids. Kick adjacent YouTuber Squeeze Benz has been arrested in connection with a series of burglaries. And have you gotten a tattoo recently? Well, I hate to tell you, but sealed bottles of major brands of tattoo and permanent makeup have been found to contain Billions of infection causing bacteria. So think twice if you're thinking of getting it. All in today's weekly roundup episode of. Now, before we start, if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss an update. Now, enough intro. Let's discuss some stuff. Today, we'll cover the recent turmoil in Sea Dog VA's charity auction, which saw an influx of fake bids using stolen credit cards. So, Here's what went down. On July 15th, Twitch viewers were eagerly participating in Sea Dog's new charity auction. The auction featured some incredible experiences like playing video games with popular streamer and queen of Twitch, Pokimane, hanging out with VTuber Iron Mouse, and even getting a picture painted by PewDiePie. Now, when the auction for the gaming session with Pokimane went live, the bids obviously skyrocketed, reaching an eye-watering $500,000. Half a million dollars. Obviously, both Pokey and Sea Dog were in disbelief. It's not every day you see this astronomical of a figure for a charity bid, so... Unless the power of boners were involved. Unfortunately, their doubts were justified. It turns out a lot of these bids were fake, being orchestrated by a prankster using stolen credit cards. And by prankster, of course, I meant criminal. Stolen credit cards. Sea Dog was understandably furious and called out the aforementioned pranksters, pointing out the absurdity and sheer, quote, cringiness of faking charity donations. Of course, unless it's for, like, tax purposes, then it's smart. Shots will always be fired. Despite the setback, he remained optimistic, noting that the real bid still amounted to a significant sum. Tiltify, the platform hosting the auction, has since enabled verifications for the bids. As of recording, the current highest verified bid stands at about $30,000 from a user named Isaac Y. Yeah, good question. Why, Isaac? Why? Though it's unclear if this is the YouTuber of the same name. The proceeds from the auction are meant to support the Immune Deficiency Foundation, which provide resources, education, and support patients with primary immunodeficiency. Fuck yeah, got through it. Last year's auction raised about $329,000 for the foundation, along with an additional $14,000 for Make-A-Wish America. So I guess it's still gonna be a happy ending. Money is going to a good cause, a fan gets to kid himself for a night. Oh, wait a minute. You know what's just dawning on me? It's just a gaming session. Like, not even a dinner with Pokey. Hmm. $30,000 for an interactive Discord call? It's a mighty privileged place, my friend. The power of boners is strong. Next, we discuss the recent charges against YouTube Daredevil and Speed Racer Squeeze Benz, also known as Antonio Genestri, who has been charged with multiple burglaries months after his arrest for reckless driving. Okay, just quick reminder as to who this Jagoff is. Squeeze is the 19-year-old YouTube daredevil that made headlines earlier this year for his reckless antics. His rise to fame stems not just from driving, but also from his confrontations with law enforcement. In one instance, a high-speed chase ensued. Officers couldn't catch him, and he, surprise, surprise, he later uploaded the footage to YouTube. Because all smart criminals have to smart. In May, the NYPD arrested him for allegedly punching a 20-year-old in the Steinway Deli. That arrest led to charges of reckless driving, employing a juvenile in the commission of a crime, theft, and conspiracy. If that wasn't enough, back in March, Benz pleaded guilty to possessing a stolen motorcycle and was ordered to pay $3,000 in restitution, which clearly wasn't enough. His notoriety surged even more after a hit-and-run incident during a kickstream with fellow douchebag Neon. Let's, uh, let's enjoy that moment for a second, shall we? Fast forward to today, and Squeeze is facing serious charges for a string of burglaries dating back to February. According to NBC New York, Fairfield officers investigated a burglary at a Speedway gas station on February 6th. Security footage captured a gray BMW X7 with three people speeding away. The car, with stolen New Jersey plates, was allegedly involved in multiple burglaries. Alongside Squeeze, a 16-year-old accomplice was also arrested. 
Currently, Squeeze is being held in Bergen County Jail, and his future looks anything but bright. Like, thank goodness. You know, first we had those dipshits over in Vegas threatening people with their pew pew, and then going full bitch mode when the cop showed up. Your pew paw, my heart. You ain't shit. Who are you gonna stop? Who? Don't hurt me, don't hurt me, please. Don't hurt me. I'm in your stomach. I am. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And now this? It's like Christmas up in here already. What? I, I see this as an absolute win. Last on the agenda, we'll delve into recent findings from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration regarding the contamination of sealed tattoo and permanent makeup inks. Right, so the FDA recently uncovered some alarming? I'm, I'm gonna go with alarming news about tattoo and permanent makeup inks. Well, I guess it's only alarming if you just got a tattoo or were planning on getting one soon, so, you know, just be careful. Anyways, according to their research, millions of potentially dangerous bacteria were found in sealed bottles of these inks, including some marked as sterile. Xiong Jae Kim, or Peter. <gasps> Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can a microbiologist at the FDA's National Center for Toxicology Research emphasized the importance of monitoring these types of products to ensure their microbiome safety. As it turns out, injecting contaminated ink deep into the skin can lead to infections and other serious health risks. I feel like a duh is in order here, but uh, I'm gonna let it slide on this one. Also, Linda Katz, the director of the FDA's Office of Cosmetics and Colors, explained that the pathogens in these inks can travel through the blood and lymphatic system, potentially causing life-threatening complications such as endocarditis or septic shock. People with multiple or large tattoos are at higher risk of exposure to harmful microorganisms. Permanent makeup poses an additional risk, especially when applied around the eye area as it increases the chance of infection. The study tested 75 samples from 14 different manufacturers in the United States, revealing that 35% of the samples contained bacterial contamination. Some samples had bacterial counts as high as 105 CFUs per gram. It stands for colony forming unit. I had to look it up too, don't worry. Previous studies found even higher contamination levels with counts reaching up to 100 million bacteria per gram. Infectious disease expert Dr. Robert Shuley stressed that the level of bacteria and materials injected into the skin should be zero. He also warned about the potential for viral infections like hepatitis C, hepatitis B, and HIV, which were not studied in the FDA report but are known risks associated with tattoos. Just make sure you're getting a clean needle, guys, or go somewhere sanitary, at least. I mean, I've had this prison tattoo since I was like fucking 18 or something. Do as I say, not as I do. Tattoo artists obviously can take steps to protect their clients, things like conducting microbiome testing on new ink batches and using autoclaves to sterilize their inks before application. Proper handling of ink bottles and maintaining a sterile environment are also highly important to minimizing contamination risk, but I'm sure every professional already knows that. And on that piece of... <laughs> If you like what you saw, help a homie out and smash that like button. Otherwise, I'll see your sexy ass next time. Bye. Also, Linda Katz, the director of the FDA's Office of Cosmetics and Colors, explained that the pathogens in these inks can travel. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying not to laugh because she's in charge of the colors. <clears throat> Hold up. I can get through this again.